Capri as he storms out of turn number nine. And now they've got a back marker. Somebody that just... We are back at Portland International Raceway where Willie T. Ribs continues to lead this Trans Am race. Running in second position is Wally Dallenbach, followed by Paul Miller, Tom Gloy, and Chris Neifel. 20 of 53 laps have been completed. As we promised you before the break, we have this specially prepared story of the often outspoken and controversial Willie T. Ribs. Many say one of the hottest properties in American motorsports today is the gentleman next to me, Willie T. Ribs. He's won twice on the Trans-American circuit of the SCCA thus far this year, and he was the center of a lot of attention before Indianapolis when it looked like he was going to become the first black race driver to attempt to qualify for the Memorial Day event. But Willie, looking back upon your career, you've, you've been involved in motorsports for a number of years now and seem to be on the outside ready to knock on the door. Well, I've been banging on the door, kicking on the door all my life, my whole career. So, you know, and I don't even think I'm on the outside. I'm on the inside, but, you know, it's just a matter of making the right moves. You got to go into the right team before you can be competitive. I got the best team in Trans Am, maybe in Trans Am history. And, uh, and you, you got to be a winner. I got great teammates, and, you know, that's the only way you can be competitive. Is the Willie T away from the racetrack and out of a fire suit, the same Willie T that straps up in this Capri and is brash and aggressive? Oh, uh, sometimes. I, you know, only when I'm sleeping am I cool. When I, when I wake up in the morning and lights come on, it's, it's time to get it on again. A lot of people probably don't remember the fact that you were invited to compete in a Grand National race several years ago. And you went to a driver's meeting before, and while you didn't actually compete in the race at the World 600, you stood at the driver's meeting and said to the Grand National competitors, I have one question, can you pass in the grass? Do you regret having said that? Oh, no, because it was, it was probably one of the most intelligent questions ever asked in a Grand National driver's meeting, because it wasn't, during, it wasn't on the racetrack that I meant. The pit lane was so narrow that uh, other cars would come out of the pit, and if you didn't slow down if you're going too fast you either run in the back of him or you got to put two wheels out on the grass to go around him and that was the question you know and it was so intelligent it, it baffled them and made him upset how could he ask a question like that and then they analyzed it took him about two weeks to catch on to it you know maybe that was a smart question after all you know come on no right. serious no, no give me a second how much of this is legit and how much of it is Willie T's showmanship? You know, I'm smarter, I'm better. No, wait, no. True. Uh, let me give you, uh, make a point. The last race, for example, Sears Point. Got to the track, walked in the gate. Cameramen pressed everywhere. 10,000 people on one mountain, 10,000 on another, 15 in the bleachers. All to come see this big talking driver, Willie T, can win again. The green flag dropped. 40 laps later, check the flag drop, cross the finish line, commentator said, Willie T, how did you do it? I said, born a racer from the crib. Oh! He said, rumble, young man, rumble. But I won the race. Let's shift gears a little bit and go back to Indianapolis this year. Rookie orientation, Willie T. Ribbs shows up with a race car, his helmet and his fire suit goes out, takes a couple of laps, comes back in, puts his helmet in his bag, turns around and walks away. Why? Right, because it was a professional decision, you know. Any winner in any sport knows that every uh, time you compete, every, chance, every time you go out, you want to be at your best performance. I knew that Indianapolis is as big as the Super Bowl, is as big as the Olympic single day anyway, and when you go out there, you're going to be in front of an audience, 500,000, millions of people. You know, I didn't want to go out there with inferiority, you know, of, of not having enough time in the car. Never been in an car before. The, the car was quickly assembled. It just wasn't right. Penley, all the top teams, they had been testing February, March. You know, Danny Sullivan, the winner, put in more miles than any driver uh, uh, in the race. 
in the beginning, he wasn't leading the race. But you let watch the last half of the race, where all that time and all that practice comes in and see what happens. He was stronger at the end because he had the time, the practice. The year before that, he crashed. In 82, he crashed. Both times he was there. This time, he was, he was brilliant. But you got to have time. you got to have the practice. Why should I have any less than a, uh, a, uh, a chance, you know? Well, then why wasn't, but Willie, why wasn't that decision made before you went to rookie orientation? You knew that you had that and then the month of May to practice in the race car. Why didn't you step aside and wait another year? Because I wanted to see for myself. Nobody's ever made decisions for me. I've always made the right decision. When it comes to setting up the car, team manager, engineers, we get together, we all decide on making a decision. But the final outcome is left up to me, you know? I had to seat, I had to drive around there, and I knew, well, I'm going to need more time here than, than I have. Get ready, you know, and be competitive, you know. Why should I go in there and not be competitive, you know? I don't expect to win the first time out, but at least I want to be competitive. And, uh, and that was the basis for my decision. Were you scared? No. Oh, man, scared. I ain't never been scared. That's why I started racing from the beginning. My most bloodthirsty critics and detractors can say whatever they want. They're going to say that whether I win or not. But if I'm scared, what's that make all the other drivers that I've beaten? And there is Willie T. Ribs off the course and on the course. He's leading here and has a, a several car length lead on his teammate. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow.